Hello guys and gals, and this is part six of the Province and Book of Fairy Tales. I believe, it's been a few days since I've read from this book, but I believe that, um, oh yeah, Seven Simons was the last story that we read, so that means that we are ready for The Prince and the Goose Girl, which is kind of a weird name, but, um, okay. And my phone is dinging a lot, which is, we're just going to unplug it for now. Fine. This is. Wait. Oh yeah. Um. As always, this is a book that was um. That's by. That's compiled by um. Allison Martin, Provinson. Fine. I'll just do that. Uh, and the art is also by um, Allison Martin Provinson, I believe. Yep. Compiled and illustrated by. And this is a book copyright in 19, 1971, I believe. But yeah, now let me find my page again. Here. The Prince and the Goose Girl, and this is by Eleanor Mordaunt. I have no idea who that is, but okay. Once through, once there was a great prince who was also a great, who, who was so great a fighter that no one dared to deny him anything that he asked. And people would give up their, their houses and lands, their children and even their own freedom rather than offend him. Everything the people had was his at, his at the asking. They feared him so and would all tremble and shake when he came thundering past on his war horse, whose hooves struck great pieces of their, uh, of their field from the earth as he passed and whose breath was whose breath was fire and they feared his sword which was so sharp that it wounded the wind as it cut through it and his battle axe that could cut the world in half or so they said and his frown that was like a cloud and his voice that was like thunder or so they said only Aerith, the goose girl feared him none at all no, not at all he is only a man she would say what you tell what what you tell of his sword and his battle axe and his great frown and all is all a child's tale. He is just a man. He eats and sleeps just like just like other men. Uh, if you wounded him, he would bleed. Some day he will love a. Woman. And he and be her slave for a oh, oh, woman and be her slave for a while. Just as any other man is, I wouldn't give that for the for that for the great bully," she she added, and snapped her fingers. "He he, Aerith, that's all what very well the folk would say. Wait till you meet it, meet his thundering meet him thundering over the common. You will fly as quick as any of your geese. We wager. I wouldn't move. It's a man's place to make room for a lady, not a lady's place to make room for a man." I wouldn't move, I tell you, and Aerith stamped her little foot. It did not seem to impress the village the village people much, perhaps because it was it was bare and made no noise on the soft dusty road, and no one needs to make plenty of noise in a world if one is to be noticed. Um A lady, a lady, they shrieked, a lord to make play place for a lady. Listen to her. My lady Goosey Gander. A fine lady indeed with bare feet and no hat. There's lots that they, there's lots that have shoes that are not ladies, says Aerith. Shoes won't make one. Nor bare feet mar one. I'm a better lady than any of you, though, for I'd not run away from anyone, even that ugly old prince. Bah, he's not noble or good or brave. He's just ugly. An ugly great bully. Wait a bit, Lady Goosey Gander, wait a bit. If ever you see him, and you will forget all your fine tales. Why, he's as tall as the church, and as strong as the sea. Why, his hands are like oak trees, and he cares no more than death who he attacks. Neither do I care, says Aerith, setting back her shoulders and tossing her chin. All men are babies, anyhow. The villagers gasped. 